Greetings from Ann Arbor, Michigan, a great state and a great place of the great USA. Welcome to our podcast series, and I am promising you that this series is going to be very enlightening, very inspirational, a lot of fun, and something that will really, I think, help you as you walk your path to holiness. This series is going to have a lot of different things that you probably have questions about, but maybe have the opportunity to ask, especially about religion just life. Like, what do they do all day? Who are they? Where do they come from? What's it like when a young woman enters religious life? So stay tuned as we will discuss where sisters come from today. Welcome back to our podcast series, The Truth Shall Set You Free. And this is part of our Go LE Digital, which you can find on the website and you can find it all over the internet because it is spreading rapidly. I just want to mention that. And also, I want to mention that the as Dominicans, the Dominican Order in the Church, 800 years old, we have a whole segment in this podcast on Veritas, which is truth. And so you will notice that in all of our podcasts, even as we're referring to our own vocational stories or um, other things that our sisters are involved in and will continue to be as, as time goes on, as God's providence has mapped out already for us, and we're living them um, with tremendous freedom and joy. I just want to mention that all truth brings us back to God. And so I think that's something very important to keep in mind because today uh, we will be interviewing another one of my sisters, Sister Stephen Patrick Jolly. And Sister is another scientist. Um, we have a number of sisters that are very interested in science in our community, which is beautiful. You will notice that all the academic fields are um, covered by some sisters in the community because as professional teachers and preachers, that's very necessary so that the education um, that we hand down uh, is a fruit of our own uh, blessings and being very well educated. But today, with Sister Stephen Patrick, I want to begin with her vocation story and a little bit about your family, Sister. So tell us where you're from and a little bit about your family. Well, Sister, you might not know, but I was actually born in Virginia, <laughs> and I grew up in Alabama. So oh, I, I did have you Alabama-based. That's right. So oh. I, I spent most of my life, my family still lives in our same home that I grew up in, oh. in Alabama. I have five brothers and a sister, and I'm right in the middle, so I'm a <laughs> typical middle child. Beautiful. <laughs> you know, the peacemaker. Uh -huh. um, all of us practice the faith, our Catholic Beautiful. faith, um, that was given to us um, by our family, and my, my parents sacrificed to be able to send us to Catholic schools yes. from kindergarten through high school. Beautiful. And it's kind of unique, but I actually went to a boarding school. For high school, where Mother Sumpta's brothers actually went, um, oh. St. Bernard in Coleman, Alabama. The Benedictines. The Benedictines. So I've got Benedictine roots, just like our own St. Thomas Aquinas. Beautiful. The Benedictines like to point that out. Yes, I'm sure they probably <laughs> do. That would fit. That, that's interesting. Now, Sister, when you were in high school in particular, was your faith always strong or was there some shaking? Because both of us teach high school students. And so I'm always interested in what was your high school experience like in regards to the faith? You know, that's a great question. I I would say that I always, my relationship with the Lord was more of, mm, this is what I'm supposed to give you, okay. um, as opposed to an actual relationship. Okay. Um, and I think that's just due to some hardships in growing up and sure. things that happen where, you know, I was praying for certain things and they just seem to get worse in our life. And, <laughs> yes. um, uh -huh. So just with that background, as I was in high school, I think being um, at boarding school an hour away from my family was great in some ways. Um, but I also, I just, 
I spent a lot of my time just being devoted to extracurriculars such as basketball oh, and music. Oh, you really were a typical high school student. Extracurriculars. Didn't give myself time to think too much, gotcha. you know. Um, so my prayer life was not the strongest, but people would say that they thought I was very faithful. Um, okay, but you internally knew you could have certainly beefed it up if you'd given it more attention. Well, maybe. It's hard to say looking okay. back, you know, because... Mm-hmm. Just where our hearts are, exactly. and then knowing what I know now, um, having encountered the Lord in in college, yes. in Eucharistic adoration, and just sensing yes. His peace um, in the in the real presence, um, praying the Rosary with Our Lady, and just being healed through the sacraments. Um, once you have that personal encounter, you realize, oh gosh. <laughs> I missed out on so much. Beautiful, sister. Um, but you can't really That's take that back. Exactly. But but it's beautiful, that self-knowledge. Now, sister, since your family chose to send you to a Catholic boarding school in high school, there must have been a, a pretty strong love of the faith in your parents, certainly. Oh, absolutely. How did you respond to their decision? I, I was... Um, not as open. I I didn't want to leave home. I didn't want to leave my mom, you know, so it was kind of hard. It's like, well, do I have to do this? Uh, Yeah. Um, I think that would be a difficult decision. But it's such a great decision. I'm so grateful for it because the people that I got to meet when I was in high school were just wonderful. So I was surrounding with this wonderful faith community. Okay. Um, Father Joel, who's the, he used to be the headmaster at St. Bernard Okay. Likes to remind me of when I was interviewing to go there, and they were like, "Do you want to come here?" And I was like, "No." Oh, how funny! <laughs> you know, I'm not, not really well, interested. You already had Truth Day on at least. <laughs> but at another point in time, oh, that's he, such a great story. He asked me. He's like, "Well, do you think you can actually get in?" And I just looked at him and I said, "If my brothers can get in, I can. I'll have no problem." <laughs> oh, how funny! Oh, sister, that's so delightful. He likes to tease good. me about that. That is so good. Okay, but I happen to know that when you graduated from there, you didn't enter the convent right away. So how did, what was next on your plan? So when I left St. Bernard, I went down to the University of South Alabama. Um, it was very much on my heart to help others. And um, I I interviewed for a program for radiology. They interview um, hundreds of people every year and they only would take 50 into their program wow. and I was accepted so I thought oh this is God's will wow. and the reason I wanted to do radiology is because I was really expecting to be a stay-at-home mom um, I wanted oh, to have a family really? and radiology would give me the ability to you know be at home when I needed to and then uh, easily go back to the job once real. the kids There's were raised real prudence in that. so I was just you know Thinking now, about were, taking care of myself. Yeah, well, okay. Were <laughs> you dating to, at this time? or I started dating in college, okay. Um, okay. kind of off and on. but. And then how did it change to you began to wonder if you had a religious vocation? Well, my vocation, it really switched so fast. I mean, I oh. was more shocked than anyone else. Oh, okay. Um, but like I alluded to, when I got to South Alabama... I met this really great group of students at the Catholic Students Center, and we would do sports together, music together, and we got a young priest in my second year, Father Alex, who, just in preaching the truth in his homilies, really, it just pierced my heart. Beautiful. Once again, the priesthood leads the way. So true. We've said it and said it on these podcast. So my heart just, it churned, and... He, he was one that asked me once, like, why aren't you coming to daily Mass? We have Mass every day at Good 9 p.m. <laughs> and I looked at my schedule and I said, well, I'm not in school and I'm not working at that time. So, okay. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. So he went to you personally and, in, and asked you why you weren't coming to daily Mass. Mm-hmm. What a beautiful, zealous priest. Absolutely. And, of course, again, coming from a beautiful Catholic family, that would resonate inside you as I have no answer for that question. Right. right. Isn't why that do you do beautiful? things? And that's the beauty of stepping away from home and... Being at college and really being able to ask, why do I do any of this? What do I actually believe? 
and to encounter truth through the preaching of others and to encounter Christ in the Eucharist, I would start going to adoration all the time. Wow. I would take my studies under the chapel and just be with him. So, I mean, you can kind of see it already sounded like I was a religious as a college student, (laughs) but I just, I fell in love with him and I didn't see it like everyone else was. Uh Uh-huh. But Uh I had a really good friend who knew she had a vocation, and she decided to do a nun run. So go to different convents during spring break with a group of our close friends. Uh And I knew I was called a married life. So I was like, okay, I'll go, but just to get out of Alabama and see (laughs) different sites, right? Road trip. Road trip. (laughs) And I tell you, it it was spring break. It was March, and every place I went... Dominican Monastery of St. Jude in Marbury, oh, yes. Alabama. Yes, yes. I just felt so much peace and love Beautiful and just place. wanted to be there. Our Nashville Dominicans, uh-huh. they taught Beautiful. me the beauty of the Dominican charism, our traditions. Mm-hmm. And it was unique because I knew I wasn't called there when I was there, but mm. they taught me just how much I love being Dominican. Wow. How but I was in. Beautiful. Washington, D.C., at the Servants of the Lord in Eucharistic Adoration, and the Lord proposed to me. Oh, he just told me, I want you to be my bride, and I was giving him every reason I need to finish college. Um, uh-huh. What it really came down to is I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was worth it. Sister, thank you for your honesty. Does everyone really hear what Sister is saying? Because that is such a common theme as the vocation director of our community. I hear it, hear it, hear it. I'm not good enough. I'm not right? worthy. And who is like I am anybody is Mm -hmm. it's such a um, we have to grow in humility to say but God is and he knows who he's picking and if he chooses to invite me in this manner his Mm -hmm. grace will be more than sufficient for me absolutely you know I can't do it by myself that's um I think we need to pray for more humility when it comes to that to say Mm -hmm. that may be true But I'm not the one in charge. God is. And I will bow to him and he will provide what I need. That's beautiful. Thank you for bringing that out. Well, and what's beautiful is he left me with, I want you to be my bride. I will do everything for you. Just trust me. Wow. So it really goes back to Our Lady's yes. You know, we only know about this much at a time. And everything that we're asked to do, we have the Mm -hmm. grace in the moment. And he's been so faithful to that. Beautiful. Well, was your family surprised? They were. <laughs> <laughs> they were. I think, well, I was surprised too mm-hmm. because that was in March. Um, I actually, it was all happening so fast I didn't actually tell them before I went on retreat with us in May. Wow. I came May on retreat. To summer retreat. Okay. Mm-hmm. And 24 hours that changed my life. Wow. Um, I felt right at home with the sisters and that was the big theme is just I was at home. And I felt like I'd always known the sisters, and the Lord just told me, your home is in Michigan. Shock of all shocks. (laughs) (laughs) From Alabama to Michigan. I know, only for the Lord. It's a trek, all right. (laughs) So I actually got papers to join a community in May after discerning a vocation in March. Didn't have a clue I was going to do that. I thought it'd take at least a year to find a community. I'd be able to finish college, you know, do all my plans. Uh And so I was with the nuns in Marbury filling out our application papers, oh, asking them to pray. Interesting. And went home for my little brother's eighth grade graduation. And he received this award from the Sarah Club. Oh. Meaning he'd be a great potential priestly vocation. Oh, how interesting. That was pretty obvious. Yes. <laughs> and so I I didn't know how I was going to tell my family, but my dad came up to me at the reception, and he kind of bumped me, and he's like, so... Uh, when are you going to enter the convent? He asked me, when are you entering the convent? And I could say, well, actually in two months. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Sister, so, isn't that beautiful? So you entered before you graduated from college. I did. Well, it was kind of a pseudo. I graduated with a certificate in radiology. Okay. I would have done one more year for a bachelor's. but Okay. Well, let me point that out, too, because so many... Um, you know, driven young women as well as men, but I'm going to refer more so to the to the women. Think that they need to um, to prove themselves, so to speak, by getting a college degree, et cetera, whatever. It's their little um, caveat of how I'm going to prove myself to to themselves. First of all, 
Uh, and it goes along with what we were just referring to, um, lacking um, the, the humility to say, God, I can't, but you can, and I'm going to trust you. Um, and so they get into perhaps a college program. And again, many wonderful communities said that they have to have a college degree before they can enter that particular community. We don't, because as Dominicans, we are perpetual educators. We are perpetually getting educated, and we are perpetually educating. Uh, it, it just It's a constant um, Dominican apostolate that flows from the contemplation. So, Sister, um, after you entered the convent, your education had to continue. So tell us that aspect. Right. So, I mean, the beauty of, of our formation is it's so centered on Christ and the Eucharist and learning, you know, just Dominican spirituality and our constitutions, the catechism. So just that initial introduction. But uh -huh. then we, we need to get trained for the apostolate. Uh -huh. And so my radiology background put me in a position to be a science teacher. So it was just more practical than my choice. But so you well, received a degree? I received a degree from Eastern Michigan um, in secondary education with a major for biology and minor in right. chemistry. Great, great, great. And then I was shocked because right after I student taught and graduated, the community sent me to the Catholic University of America for my master's in biology. Beautiful. Um, and... I, I was really shocked by that. I had no idea. It's, I don't know if I should tell you, but I actually, my goal in life was to get out of school as quickly as possible. <laughs> so the joke was I had on the me. same goal. <laughs> <laughs> but it was beautiful because graduate school um, really helped me to love study yes, and truth. Yes. Especially studying. Um, Things that no one else has studied before and getting into that research Beautiful side of things. Research, uh-huh. And so by the time I finished my master's degree, the department was encouraging me to continue for a doctorate. And they said, wow. we will we will totally pay for everything. Wow, sister. Um, and what I, a gift. I know. it's Science is a very much a gift to mm -hmm. me from the community, from God. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just told mother, this is what they've said. And, and she said, okay, hon, but you've got two years. <laughs> so I, I did two more years on site at Catholic U doing my research. And then I started full time teaching and, and um, finishing up the research and writing on the side. How beautiful. Sister, tell us what your research was and what what field you explored in, in cellular biology, which is your PhD. Mm -hmm. So I got into a yeast lab that studies PDR5, which is a multi-drug transporter. Um, usually when I say that, it means absolutely nothing. Um, but you can make sense of it if you think about cancer and how some people become resistant to cancer uh -huh. um, treatment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, the protein that I study is able to remove drugs from the yeast cell very quick. So it, it's used um, to cultivate antifungal resistance. Oh, interesting. So kind of studying how cells, all different types of cells, become resistant to drugs that are meant to kill them. Um, because the wow. living organism is so dynamic, it's going to use every means it can to survive. Right? Exactly. So you, you mutate one thing, well, it's going to create another mutation in order to survive. Exactly. So my research title, the dissertation, was Identification of SUP5, a protein that interfaces with the deviant ATP binding site of yeast transporter PDR5. I think um, I can remember that. <laughs> <laughs> That's and a long one to it is. up as I many had times to, as you I had to study had it to. before. <laughs> no, I yeah. can't stick with you today. Um, Beautiful. But the whole background is I... So ABC transporters are found in all organisms, from the smallest bacterium to us. Okay. And so it's, a, it's one of the most common uh Super families of proteins. They have a very common structure shared in all of these families where 
They form channels or pumps inside a membrane of some sort that allows things to come into the cell or out of the cell or uh -huh. into an organelle or out of an organelle, okay. those okay. types of things. Mm -hmm. And um, my lab had just discovered what we call suppressors um, of PDR5. So we had, we're trying to understand the signature motif and what it does, and this is all like foreign language to you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm following it. I love it. <laughs> Not that I could do it, but I love science. So what we found is when we have a certain mutant of PDR5 protein, it doesn't function nearly as well. It's like at, at a third of what a normal wild type is what we say functioning okay. protein would do. Mm -hmm. And we took this mutant and we did a screen where we subjected it to mutagens and found cells that were able to become hyper-resistant. So they went from being extremely weak to very much drug-resistant. Wow. It's amazing, right? This is the living cell. Interesting. I hope you all are following <laughs> this. I'm finding it fascinating. And we try to then figure out, well, what is it that's causing this hyper-resistance? Yes. And so I received that project heading into my lab. And that's when we call it SUP5, SUP6, it's a SUP <laughs> for suppressor or oh. a mutation, another mutation that causes um, a restored phenotype or function okay. of the protein. How interesting, sister. So what was fascinating about it is SUP5 in particular um, is able to restore this normal resistance by increasing this ATPase type of activity. Um, and so we were very intrigued by that. You know, <laughs> That's right, that's right. You remember from high school. Uh -huh, I sure do. So sadly, I never actually found SUP5 or SUP6. So um, my, my research is still open if, if the Lord ever gave that well, avenue. I remember you also were given several summers by the community to be able to continue this research. That's correct? what Mother mother gave that to me, so I'd and be able to And wasn't finish. there a Dominican priest also involved at some point in time? Oh, yes. Father Nicanor Astriaco. We actually met my second semester at the Catholic University, and he um, he just heard I was working in a yeast lab. and that said was the connection? That's it, yeah. Oh he said, goodness. sister, I work in a yeast lab, too, at Providence College. Oh I would love goodness. to have you come see my lab at any point in time. And so that summer, I was able to go there when Sister Joseph Maria was studying to work in his yeast lab. Sure. Oh, and how beautiful. If you talk about Providence, sister, I, I don't think I would have continued in research. I don't think the doctorate would have become a possibility. My heart was not really in it based on my own experiences up uh -huh. to that time. Mm -hmm. But being with Father in his lab, seeing him working with the students, seeing um, the community of scientists that he had set up and how they each wow. had a specific function and they helped each other, um, seeing his own spiritual fatherhood. Oh, how um, beautiful. It was beautiful. And I just, I saw how he as a consecrated um, religious scientist uh -huh. was able to impact these students. And, mm. and it kind of made it more visible for me um, mm. of a complementary role that I could have. How beautiful. So when you went back to your teaching, did you carry some of those skills back with you or that mindset? I think so. Yeah, uh -huh. just always trying to get to know the students and be open to them and their needs, mm -hmm. um, praying for them. Beautiful. And sister, also our audience uh, knows this or can look it up on um, on the series if, if they choose, but uh, I also was blessed to be able to um, talk with Sister Mary Elizabeth, uh, who also has a PhD in electrical engineering, hers is from U of M. And so I know that both of you are now working on a very important um, science slash faith, same thing. Um, project research with um, materials that will be coming out. So I don't want to spoil this for our audience, but to say you need to also continue in watching these because, again, God gave you these incredible gifts in, in multiple ways. Certainly, um, when he made you, he gave you these gifts, and then also certainly the way 
you were raised and uh, your experiences in, in the, the Catholic boarding school, your experiences in um, the University in Alabama, as well as your experiences, certainly, um, after you entered the community and the dedication you have since brought to it. So it's beautiful to see, again, the reminder of what God can ask of us if we just have the courage and the humility to say what Mary said, be it done unto me according to your will. So um, let's um, keep each other in prayers as we say that, and certainly your children, your friendships, and yourself, and really uh, give God everything because he is totally everything with all caps. And that faith will produce the holiness for the church um, in the manner that he wishes from each of us. Sister Stephen Patrick, thank you so very much for joining us today. And thank you, Sister. I look forward to hearing more about your next project. God bless you. God bless you, Sister. So if you like the material on this particular podcast, then please click on the next podcast for another fascinating story.